Hi, Mandy. Hi, Patty. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm really excited to talk to you. For my viewers, I just want to mention that Mandy and Patty and I, we used to work together at Cisco, and then we all went in different directions. So we're all in different companies now. And if you could, uh, I'll start with Patty, if you could just introduce yourself. Certainly. My name is Patty Horrigan, and I live in Southern California. In my entire career, I've been doing consultative technical sales. So I currently work for Nuance Communications and we do AI applications for customer service and security biometric authentication primarily. Perfect. Thank you, Patty. And, and Mandy, how about yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Mandy Young Garby. Um, so I've been in the tech industry for about 12 years now. And uh, I actually currently live in San Jose with my husband and our three-year-old microbrewery. So if you guys ever want to do another chat about beer, I am all here for you. Um, today, I work at Zoom as the global architect manager, um, and we handle a lot of our escalations in the field um, around technical um, escalations and for the Zoom product line. So Manny and Patty are two super successful women that I've worked with in the past, and I really wanted to hear from them their perspective on what it is that would be helpful to you, especially for those of you that are early in career, any any kind of advice that they have. Because in the past, I might have talked about culture fit and leadership and certifications when you're coming out of school, going into a tech job. But I wanted to ask Patty first, maybe any particular advice you have for folks that are early in career moving into a tech field? Definitely. I would say the first thing to do is to stay curious and ask a lot of questions. Ask questions of your parents, friends of your parents, people that you've come into contact with in terms of volunteering, your school, as well as in your community. I think asking all the questions, writing along with people um, was super helpful to me. My sister's boyfriend was in the tech community and I had the opportunity to ride with him and really thought, hey, this could be something I might be good at. So the next piece of advice is to think about what you're good at. A lot of people give the coaching, follow your passion, but that's hard to do when you haven't figured out what your passion is. So I think the best advice is to think about what you're really good at and then set some plans to get really great at that. And that involves doing ride-alongs, you know, networking, finding some mentors informal mentors, people that you can ask questions to and do your research. What is it like to work in this company? What is it like to work in this industry? What are the things I am good at? And to definitely leverage the things you're good at as a woman, which might be collaboration and teamwork. Traditionally, those are strengths. Thank you, Patty. And with respect to you know what you're good at, when I look at my kids, I, I see that the two of them are quite different in their personalities. One of them is good at just naturally being a leader in his class, and the other one is like really good at athletics. And so I can totally see how they would take you know different paths in their career as, as they get older. So that's great advice. How about you, Mandy? What do you think in terms of just early in career advice that you can give? Um, Patty, thank you for sharing that. Um, following your passion, knowing what you enjoy doing is absolutely 100% top of mind when you are looking for where you should go in your career. And also know that those interests and those passions can change and that's okay. A small story here. I actually started out my career as a genetics researcher and pivot into Cisco as a engineer. So don't be afraid of making a change and making a leap. It's okay that your passion and what you enjoy changes and you know what happens? It will change. I don't think we're all enjoying the same thing throughout our entire career. So have the courage to be able to acknowledge that, hey, you may not be doing something that you 100% enjoy, and that's okay. The other thing is the folks that you work with <laughs> are such a big part of your job. You probably spend, you know let's say a normal work day, a work week, Monday through Friday, you spend more time with the folks you work with than probably your family. So make sure um, beyond just knowing that it's a good fit for you for the role for the job, that the team you're working with, the people you're working with are folks that you will enjoy being around a lot. Um, one thing that I use as a kind of litmus test is 
would I be okay with sitting with this person on a plane for 12 hours? If I am okay with sitting next to this person on a plane, I know I can work with them. I know I can travel with them. Um, so definitely make sure that you are um, looking out for not just the job, but also the team that you'll be a part of. Oh, that's great. You know, I actually don't enjoy sitting next to anyone for 12 hours on a plane. <laughs> but, uh, but I, uh, but, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but that's, uh, but I, I know exactly what you're saying. So that's, that's great advice. And I didn't know that you were a genetic researcher in the beginning, moving into technology, becoming a manager. Very great, impressive. Uh, yeah, very impressive. One of the other things is when I was in school, most of the students were, were guys, were males in the class, right? So there was very few women that we had in engineering class and computer science class. And hence, in the tech industry as a whole, even today, even though there is a big movement to be more inclusive and you know, diverse in these or large organizations or small or big companies, still, women are minority in these big tech companies. So question I wanted to ask you, um, and I'll go with Mandy first, is any specific advice that you have for women coming into the tech industry? Definitely. This is something very close to my heart. Having, you know, experienced that side of the house, especially in an engineering and architect roles. First off, I think we have to address the elephant in the room to know that there is a bias. Yes, it's getting better. Um, the industry as a whole, we're addressing that, but there is a bias for women in tech. And it's, almost empowering just to accept that fact. And after we accept that, you know, focus on what you can bring to the table rather than what you may need to develop or what's lacking. Again, going back to what Patty was saying, what are you good at? Focus in on that and how you can, you know, bring that into your job, bring that into your team. The other part of it is um, squad up. Like, Make sure you are um, getting in touch, making the connections with other women in the industry, other women in your company. It's, it's really great to have a community, folks to talk to who are in a similar situation, have a similar experience to help you support one another. And even, you know, beyond that, have a mentor, uh, make sure that, you know, there's someone you can talk to who has gone through that experience, went through the same challenges that you are in or will encounter. So to all of Sherv's listeners who are women in technology, I am happy to speak with any of you who are looking for a mentor. There are so many hurdles that I think women will jump through and happy to help any of you. Awesome. Mandy, thank you so much. Yeah. And I know you're super busy with your day job, but your offer of being able to provide some guidance for people to reach out to you, that's really, that's awesome. So, so thank you for doing that. Patty, how about yourself? What do you think in terms of advice for women coming into the tech world? It's really a good question. And Mandy, you hit on so many important things and mentorship is key, but how do you get a mentor? That's where people get stuck many times, right? How do you find the right mentor? So more than anything, what I found to be successful is informal mentor relationships. So if I have the opportunity to meet a woman in leadership, which I recently did at Nuance, I was impressed by her style, the way she handled difficult conversations in small and large meetings. And so I had the opportunity uh, to give her a call and say, you know what, I could use a mentor. Would you be open to something informal where I could learn from you periodically, bounce ideas off of you? And she said, yes. So I love it. The asking the question, will you be my mentor, feels scary sometimes. So the less formal you can make it, I think the better. I think also getting involved with some organizations where you can share passions for supporting others. I was involved at Cisco in the Girls Power Tech events where I was a co-chair and I love that. It gave me an opportunity to show some leadership. It also gave me the opportunity to really get in touch with younger girls. As a boy mom, I didn't have that experience, but I was able to relate and remember how it felt to be unsure of myself, how it felt to be unsure, should I be in a STEM class? Or should I do something more creative, more girly, et cetera? Um, but to step back and to support women in addressing what they are good at and what's really needed in the tech industry are good collaborators and to take advantage of those things that we are super good at. And instead of shying away to say there's more men, guess what? 
that creates an opportunity when companies are trying to be more diverse. They're more open to listening to women and to hearing your capabilities. So put them out there. Go for it is what I would say. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. I I really do believe there there is a big push. Uh, I see it so much at Microsoft. I saw it at Cisco where there are just more opportunities and the more focus on diversity and being inclusive. So thank you for that advice. And then the last question I had, and I'll go with Mandy first, is if you could go back in time, is there anything that you think you would maybe do differently in your career? There are so many, <laughs> Sherman and Patty, but I will touch on one uh, related to the topic we were just on for women in tech. Early in my career, I, I wish I had the courage to be a more authentic being able to acknowledge, again, that bias with women in tech. Candidly, I started my career as an engineer with a large group of other colleagues who are male. I believe I was the only female in that group who onboarded. And I decided, hey, in order for me to fit in, to be able to be one of the guys, I had to change who I was. And now looking back, I wish I had the courage to be who I was and perhaps either show or teach my colleagues, my peers, that this is how working with other women in technology is and this is how we can address it together. And I did not take advantage of that and I wish I did and I'm doing a lot of that now in coaching other younger, earlier in career women. When you encounter that, it's actually an opportunity that you can take to educate those around you and to start being part of the change in, you know, that bias that we talked about. It's funny, you know, the, the story that comes to my mind as you're talking, uh, Mandy, is not related to work, but like you talked about like how maybe guys could better understand how to work with women in the, in the workforce. Uh, for me, I learned this in a different way when I was younger with my sister uh, growing up in Canada, I remember like I used to watch a lot of wrestling on TV, like WWF and stuff. So I would do these moves with my brother. And one time I tried it with my older sister and the reaction I got was completely different. I was like, okay, so <laughs> I shouldn't be doing a power driver on my sister. <laughs> so anyways, uh, not exactly the same, but uh, I mean, the interactions, the way we work. So it's good to kind of get that response and men need to understand how to really work together uh, with women in the industry as well. So that's good feedback. How about you, Patty? What do you think? Oh, boy. Mandy talked about a lot of things she might have done differently. And I would agree. Looking back, there's always a retrospect. There's always things you would have done a little bit different, right? Said it a little bit different, address something a little more specifically, etc. Um, but looking back, I would say I've been very, very fortunate to have a very long career, which is wonderful. Hired right out of college into an IBM company that was then purchased by Siemens and then recruited to go to Cisco. I had the opportunity to work for some very large companies and had a very loyal. I've been very loyal <laughs> over the years. And I guess what I would say is I might have challenged myself to go to a smaller company so I could grow and learn and take on new leadership roles. I might have challenged myself to do that rather than staying at Cisco 12 years doing the same job. Now, I was working with different customer sets, different teams, so it was never boring. And I felt very successful and happy. Um, so making those decisions is always difficult. But in retrospect, I would say it might have been beneficial to put myself in a more uncomfortable place and work to be part of a more agile, you know, leadership team at a younger age. Yeah, actually, that's a that's a great uh, advice, Patty, because. I'm thinking, you know, I was at Cisco a long time too, and I would go from like different segments from public sector to commercial to enterprise, different segments, but I did similar jobs, right? So I think for me too, what, what I would do if I could go back in time is similar to what you said, right? Like try different jobs, different positions, different companies, you know, a lot of folks, you know, you kind of get lured by how well you might be doing your compensation, everything, everything is going well. If you're too comfortable, maybe that's a good time to move actually. 
<laughs> it's counterintuitive, right? And so having a bias for action is really powerful. So instead of being fearful, try something. Instead of being worried about making a cold call, pick up the phone. So uh, it also applies to the career movements as well. In retrospect, that's what I would have done probably. Those are the questions I had, and I really appreciate your responses. Anything else? So one of the things that we've talked about in the past, Shervin, is visualizing success. Because you're put into situations from time to time in your career that are uncomfortable. You're worried about bringing up a topic, having a difficult conversation with a peer or with another manager or even with your own manager. But getting quiet and really thinking about the situation, feeling how you feel, and then just visualizing success and dry running the conversation is super, super helpful Getting quiet and doing a little meditating, calming down if you're upset is also a really powerful tool that isn't well talked about in the workplace. But even during the middle of the day, if you find yourself feeling anxious, take a break, do a little meditation, come back centered, and that way you're a better teammate and a stronger leader. I have Uh a closing statement, um, something I kind of live by in my career now, ever since I started at Cisco. Coming from a non-technical background with genetics and biology into this world of tech, I wasn't afraid to ask dumb questions because I always had this backing of, well, I didn't really have the background. So don't be afraid of asking questions as dumb as you think they are. The person who's answering has asked before. That's why they know the answer. And the second part I ask myself whenever I'm in a situation or Even in, you know, what we talked about in those difficult conversations, I would ask myself, what's the worst that could happen? And if it doesn't involve, you know, me not having access to beer anymore, that's okay. It's not that bad. (laughs) As far as you being limited from beer, I don't think it's a problem anymore. You have your own brewery at home. (laughs) (laughs) She should be okay. Yeah, she found a solution for that. So... So Patty and Mandy, thank you so much for your time. Great feedback. I I really appreciate everything that you guys shared with the audience. We'll be talking again soon. Have a great day. Thank you.